Back when I was first getting into all of this hacker business, it was literally a dream of mine to be able to draw something that I coded on my screen. These days, of course, my aspirations have changed a little bit, but if you happen to be in a similar position to where I once was, you're in luck because I'm Kaz, and today I'm going to show you exactly how to create a simple box ESP around enemy players, which looks something like this. So without further ado, let's talk about how it works. To make an ESP, you must be able to do three main things. Number one, you need to be able to get the 3D positions of the players in the world. Number two, you need to be able to convert their world positions into positions on your screen. And last but not least, you need to be able to actually draw lines or boxes or whatever you choose on those positions on your screen. So let's try to tackle these one by one. To make a proper box around the player that scales accurately with distance, we actually need to get two positions on the player. Those two positions being the position of their head and the position of their feet. Getting their head position is simple enough. We can call the setup bones virtual function to get the player's bone matrix, and then we can use the head bone index, which is eight, to get the 3D position of the player's head in the world. Now, when it comes to getting their feet position, we have two options. Either we can use the m underscore vec origin net var, or we can use the get abs origin virtual function for from the player class. So what exactly is the difference between these two methods? Well, the get abs origin virtual function actually uses interpolated data to calculate the player's origin, whereas m underscore vec origin is their last network position from the server. This means that the player's absolute origin is updated each frame, whereas the normal origin is only updated once per tick when your client receives information from the server, which is about 64 times per second. Now, if all of that is slightly confusing to you, essentially the absolute origin is updated more frequently than the m underscore vec origin net var, which makes it way less jittery and way smoother than the last networked origin. So we will be using the absolute origin to get our feed position. To convert a 3D world position to a position on your screen, we use something called a world to screen function. If you're not familiar with linear algebra, which I assume you aren't, essentially, if you have a vector pointing to some position in space, you can multiply it by a matrix to perform what is known as a linear transformation, which will move any vector in the same predictable way each time it is multiplied. This is how games take models, transform them into world space, and finally transform them onto your screen. To do this though, we need the game's view matrix, and luckily for us, Gaben was so kind as to give us the view matrix in a neat little virtual function exposed by the engine. Of course, this is an extreme oversimplification, but it is all you need to know for now. So let's move on. Finally, when it comes to drawing things on your screen, we usually have two main options. Either you can hook DirectX functions and render using the DirectX API, or you can use CSGO's built-in rendering interface known as iSurface or CMAT system surface. Each of these routes have their own pros and cons, but for the sake of simplicity, today we are going to render with the iSurface interface to avoid all the unnecessary complications that come with DirectX rendering. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get the base that we'll be using and let's get started. In the description down below, you'll find a link to my based GitHub repository. This is what I'm going to be using for this tutorial. So either go ahead and clone the repository for yourself or use it as a reference to follow along in your own project. To clone the code, all you need to do is hit the big green code button and a zip file containing all the code will be found in your downloads folder. From there, extract the file to wherever you like and then double click the .sln file found inside to open it up in Visual Studio. Now at the top, switch from debug x64 to release x86 and and we are ready to go. So let's do it. We're going to begin by hooking the paint traverse function from the panel interface. This function is responsible for rendering all the UI panels that you see in game. Start by creating the function type definition like so. The function returns nothing, so we make the return type void. We also need to use the this call calling convention because the function resides in a class. Last but not least, the function takes three parameters, but don't forget that the first argument is the class's this pointer. Using this type definition, we can now create the variable which holds the original paint traverse function so that we can call it later. And finally, we can define our paint traverse hook like so. This is the function that we're going to make the game call instead of its own function, and this is where we're going to run our ESP logic. Now, in your hook's source file, we actually need to initialize the hook. Find the hook's setup function and below the included create move hook, place the following code to create your paint traverse hook during initialization like so. The function is located at index 41 of the panel interface. Finally, all that is left to do is for us to actually define our hooked function's body. We're going to do that at the bottom of the hook's source file like so. Remember that the function is in our hook's namespace, so you need a prefix paint traverse with hooks colon code. At this point, you should have a fully working paint traverse hook. All that you need to do now is call the original function like so, passing in the panel interface as the first parameter. 
Before we go any further, I'd like to thank myself for sponsoring this video. For just $3 a month, you can get access to all the source code used in my videos and more over on patreon.com. Also, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to drop a like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out. Anyway, let's get back to coding our ESP. Remember earlier I said that Paint Reverse is responsible for rendering all the panels that you see in game? Well that is quite important because you do not want to be rendering your ESP on every single panel in the game. That'll ruin your performance. Therefore the first thing we're going to do is confirm that we do in fact have the right panel. We do this with a little if statement. We're going to check if the VGUI panel parameter that the game passed to us is the same as engine VGUI get panel. And the panel that we want to get is the tools panel. We use this panel in specific because some panels are only rendered while you are in the main menu, for example. We want to use a panel that is always rendered. Now that we have the correct panel, we need to confirm that we are in fact in game and that our local player is valid, or else we're going to run into some issues when trying to use our local player pointer later. With those standard checks out the way, we can now use a for loop to loop through each of the players in the game. We want our loop to begin at index 1 because index 0 is the world entity and we're going to loop as many times as there are clients in our game. Next, in our for loop we can get the pointer of the entity at the loop's current index by calling get entity from index from the entity list interface. Of course, passing in the index of our loop. Naturally, we're going to make sure that this pointer is valid, and then we're going to make sure that the entity is not dormant and that they are alive. For our last entity check, we're going to make sure that they are not a teammate by comparing their team number to ours like so. At this point, we should have a valid, living enemy player, but there is one last obscure thing that we need to check for. We don't want to draw our ESP on players that we are spectating, because, well, that's useless. So let's check if our local player is dead, and if we are dead, let's see if the player that we are spectating is the current player in the loop. And if they are, we can continue just like this. All right, now we can create an array of three by four matrices to store the player's bone matrix. We call the player's setup bones function to populate the bone matrix like so. Next, we create a vector called top. This is going to store the head position on our screen. We can use the debug overlay interface to call a built-in world to screen function known as screen position. We're going to use the head bone index, which is eight, to get the position of the player's head in the world. But very importantly, take note that we are adding 11 to the Z coordinate of the head position. This is because we want our box to be above the player's head, not aligned with it. Next, we do the same thing for the bottom position, except this time we use get ABS origin to get their feet and we subtract nine from the Z coordinate because we want the box to be below their feet. At this point, we have all of the coordinates that we need, so let's create our box. We're going to start by subtracting the top's y value from the bottom's y value, which will give us the height of our box. We can now multiply this value by a fraction to generate our box's width. I'm going to use 0.3 because it looks best to me, but you can play around with this value to get an aspect ratio that you desire. Now we can get each side of our box by adding and subtracting our width from either the top or bottom x coordinates. Last but not least, to actually draw our box, first set the color that you want the box to be by calling eye surface draw set color. I'm going to make the box white for now and then call draw outline rect, passing in the coordinates we just figured out. Alright, I've just hopped in game and injected and as you can see everything is working fabulously. This is like the most simple ESP you could ever create so let's make it a little bit more interesting. Back in our code, we're going to add an outline to our boxes to make them stand out a little better. Start by setting your draw color to black or whatever color you want your outline to be for that matter. And now we're going to draw two additional outlined rectangles. The first one is going to be one pixel inside of our box and the other is going to be one pixel outside of our box. Back in game, it already looks better, but there is still one more thing that I'd like to add to make it a bit more useful. We're going to add a very simple outlined health bar on the left of our box. Because we just set the draw color to black, let's draw the outline of our health bar so long. Of course, these are just the values that I'm using. I'm offsetting it by six pixels to the left, but I suggest you play around with it and get it to something that you like. Next, we need to create the full of our health bar, and we want its color to change based on the player's health value. Since health is an integer from zero to one, we're going to get the player's health and multiply it by 0.01 in order to create a health percentage from zero to one. If you think about it, when the player is at full health, our health fraction is going to be 1. And when we draw our health bar, we want it to be 100% green and 0% red. Therefore, to get the correct health color, we're going to get the value of red by taking 1, subtracting our health percentage from it, and then multiplying the result by 255 to give us the RGB value. Green is a lot simpler as we just need to multiply 255 by our health percentage. Now that we have the color, last but not least, all that is left to do is to draw the actual bar, which we will do like so. All right, great stuff. If you hop into game, you should find that you have a pretty clean looking outlined box ESP with a dynamic health bar.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, that just about wraps up this tutorial. Hopefully this serves as a decent introduction to surface rendering in the source engine. Now it is time for you to get creative and start making some sexy visuals. As per usual, massive shout out to my patrons. You guys are awesome. And don't forget all the source code will be up on Patreon if you are interested in that. Either way, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.